My name is Eddie Perez, and I work with the Water and Sanitation Program, uh, and I'm based in our um, office in Washington, D.C. All right. Okay, nice to meet you. And can you tell me something about this uh, learning project or program you've got going sure. on rural sanitation? Sure. Well, I've been, uh, uh, I and other colleagues have been advocating for doing more in sanitation for quite a few years now. And about four or five years ago, in talking to colleagues in the World Bank and other places, they said, you know, I started to pitch them, you know, oh, there are all these people without access to sanitation, all these babies dying, etc. They said, yeah, 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 we, we, we got it. We understand it's a problem, but we don't really know what to do about it. Because all we've seen are sanitation projects that are very small scale, run by NGOs that are not replicable, that are not sustainable, and they're not scale. And we at the World Bank and in other places, and if you want to make a difference, we need to know how do we do it at large scale. So, okay. you know, so basically that was the starting point of saying, going from advocacy to getting results, to you know, action and results. So we had, um, we were fortunate that we were able to um, hook up with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which was trying to learn about these things as well. And uh, we started a project now, almost four years ago, in partnership with national and local governments in Indonesia, India, and Tanzania, mm -hmm. where the basic approach was, rather than starting small and then getting it right and trying to scale it up, which is an approach that we've seen fail for 30 years, right. Right. we said, let's start big and learn what's working, what works well, and what needs to be improved. So what are some of the factors that uh, you've picked up along the way as being important factors for working at scale? Right. Well, I mean, the, the first thing is to have an effective approach. So what we did is we built, we took on existing approaches that had proven to be effective in, on the one, in terms of sanitation. One was the CLTS approach to change behaviors to get people to so stop defecating in the open. Total sanitation. led total sanitation. Right. And the other one is the sanitation marketing approach, which is applying social marketing principles very commonly used in the public health field for things like promoting condoms or bed nets and stuff, providing, doing that in sanitation to help families once they've changed their behaviors and to then help them work their way up the sanitation ladder to sanitation facilities that are going to be more sustainable. So working with the private sector, doing formative research to really understand what families need and want or are willing to pay for to work their way up. So we basically have CLTS, behavior change communication, and sanitation marketing. So that's our sort of first step, develop an approach that's effective, that so works. And then the key, the, the service delivery model to make it at scale is to work with local governments. Most, co most increasing number of countries have decentralized their water sanitation responsibilities to local governments. And they are a very powerful and underused resource in terms of service delivery mm. in sanitation. Yeah. They've had a long history with water, but not in sanitation. Yeah. And I want to be clear, we're not talking about them going out and building latrines, right. but I was gonna ask facilitating that. processes, you know, so help okay. do the CLTS uh, triggering. So the government has, at the decentralized level, has still a key role to support the, all the sanitation, like all to the To make processes. sure it happens. Yeah, to make sure it happens. That's so right. that's, is that installing latrines, or is that, uh, I don't know, emptying pits, yeah. or is that promoting, uh, you know, CLTS and right. getting so, people to the right areas, I mean... So it's primarily, on the one hand, it's, it's, it's them helping to the create the demand and the behavior change by promoting CLTS. And in some countries, it is local government staff that do it, like health extension workers. Um, in other countries, the local government hires a resource agency, like an NGO, to go out to communities and do the triggering process. So, so now I have to ask you a question because I'm working on the wash cost project mm -hmm. for IRC. And uh, are you finding that that governments understand how much it costs to do this? That they can, do they have the funds for it? And what kind of support do they need from from outside? Right. Since wash cost is, is looking at some of these costs. Right. You know, I'm so again, we're, we're the info there. it's a yeah. learning project, and that's yeah. part of the process in, in learning yeah. that. And in all three countries, uh, Indonesia, India, and Tanzania, 
all three of which have completely different economies. You know, India's middle income, in, Indonesia's not the poorest, but it's not quite middle income, uh, you know, in that area, and Tanzania, which is a much poorer country. In all those places, part of the advocacy and part of the evidence sort of uh, process and advocacy is saying that it's not affordable for you, if you're serious about improving sanitation in rural areas, it's not affordable for you to be going out and building latrines. Okay. But it is affordable for you and it's much more cost efficient to be doing the promotion, the software part, the monitoring, the okay. making sure it's working well, the creating the environment for the local private sector to do what they do best. Yeah. And I suppose and, households as well. And then that's right, right and, and communities. I mean yeah. the whole ethos of community led total sanitation is that the communities are the ones who get uh, ignited, they get galvanized, who work together so that they're you know, uh, is there living. and so in the end, it's the households who are paying for their sanitation facilities, the yeah. latrine. Yeah. But the local governments have been paying out of their own budgets the cost for the facilitation, for the you know yeah. media campaigns, the radio campaigns, and those kinds of stuff. All right. Well, thanks a lot. I hope to hear more in the future. All right.